Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd So I want us, after having studied some of the other books uh, in Aqidah for example some of the books of Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala regarding Aqidah Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala he emphasized um, uh, in his writing what he found to be in his time one of the big trials and fitnas that had befallen the Ummah during his time especially in the Arab Peninsula so Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab Ibn Abdul Wahhab was dealing with especially those people who had deviated regarding Tawheed al-Uluhiyya meaning the Tawheed of Ibadah the Tawheed of worship so those people who had went astray in that for example worshipping graves worshipping saints, worshipping trees worshipping rocks, making tawassal with them uh, seeking refuge in the dead, seeking help and support from the dead, but they said La ilaha illallah. This is the fitna that Sheikh Muhammad ibn Wahhab was dealing with. So he wrote extensively about that. For example, in Kitab al Tawheed, Kitab uh, also Al Usul al Thalatha, uh, we studied um, uh, Nawaqid al Islam, the nullifiers of Islamic faith, and so forth. So now, I want us to uh, study a, a, a book which is in some senses uh, maybe a bit more advanced and this is one of the books of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala Shaykh al-Islam wrote extensively about the, the same trials because during his time as well there was a lot of fitna of Tawheed people violating Tawheed al-Uluhiyya mean Tawheed al-Ibadah regardless of whether it was in the issue of rulership regardless of whether it was people who were making tawassal like extreme Sufis who were uh, seeking refuge from the grave seeking refuge and 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 from uh, from jinn and so forth he dealt with that kind of fitna as well but also Shaykh al-Islam wrote extensively about Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifat about the Tawheed of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes. So this was a part of the Tawheed that Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala was dealing with. Shaykh al-Islam, Imam ibn Taymiyyah, whose name was, his full name was Taqiyuddin Ahmed ibn Abdul Halim. And he was born in Haran on January 22nd, 1263, uh, A.D. the 10th of Rabi al-Awwal 661 uh, Hijri his family had long or I'm sorry 661 uh, Hijri Nam. his family had long renowned for its learning so his, he came from a family of scholars and Shaykh al-Islam Rahimahullah Ta'ala he was uh, at a young age of course memorized the Quran and he was raised up on the Hanbali Madhab and Hanbali Fiqh but however he excelled and studied all the Madhabs meaning the Madhab of Imam Abu Hanifa the Madhab of uh, Imam Shafi'i wa Imam Malik wa Imam uh, Ahmed Rahimahumullah Ta'ala Jami'an and Shaykh al-Islam he excelled in all of those madhabs Rahimahullah Ta'ala Shaykh al-Islam was well versed as we mentioned in the Quran and due to his his knowledge at an early uh, age he also he added uh, to because he was a mujtahid, he was able to deduce and not have to be bound by his madhab of the Hanabila, of, the, of the, the madhab of Imam Ahmed. But rather, he was a mujtahid in which he had excelled to such a degree of knowledge and scholarship that he was able to not be locked into a madhab, that he, 
he took to what he felt according to the strongest evidence based on the Quran and the Sunnah and the Ijma of the Ummah. And as Shaykh al-Islam mentions in this book about Ijma, meaning the consensus, and he, when he referred to consensus, he was referring to the consensus of the Salaf al-Saleh, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. So Shaykh al-Islam, he wrote extensively in all the funun. But what is preserved for us from Shaykh al-Islam from his books, because his books were burned, and he died in prison, and he was, tor he was uh, tortured for his belief and for his striving. He was a mujahid, he fought jihad, fi sabilillah. He wrote and made jihad with the pen, meaning he wrote extensively about deviation in the religion. He also wrote extensively, he wrote uh, whatever it is said that whatever he wrote about and whatever he spoke about regarding knowledge, it was as if he uh, specialized in that field. He was had so much immense knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed him, rahimahullah ta'ala, uh, to be a great mujtahid. And that's why he is referred to as Shaykh al-Islam, the Shaykh, the scholar of Islam, you know, in his time and thereafter. Uh, people refer to Shaykh al-Islam. Shaykh al-Islam, he also, he studied the uh, philosophy extensively as well. So he was able to debate with those people who were influenced by the philosophers themselves, but actually the way philosophy had come into Islam, meaning that many Islamic scholars had begun to uh, be influenced by the philosophers. And this is especially true and had a great effect on Al-Asma'i wa Sifat, on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes. The fact that they studied uh, philosophy, they were influenced and they began to fall into deviation in their creed, in their aqidah. Because they had studied philosophy, they used their ideas, they used their debates. And for example, many of the groups who the foundation of their aqidah is influenced by philosophy because they taqaddam al-aql ala naql. They prefer and uh, the aql, their intellect, over the text of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Or when they use their aql, their intellect, to make their rulings when the Quran and the Sunnah doesn't agree with their particular intellect. So these are the ways in which Ahla Kalam and the people of uh, the Aqlaniyun and the various groups where they went astray. For example, groups like from, from those groups, we have, uh, in the beginning, we have the Jahmiyyah, we have the Mu'tazila after them, then we have uh, the Maturidiyah, and we have the Asha'ira. All of these groups are influenced, and this is all a part of their foundation in their, their Madhab. And we'll talk much more extensively as we go in the Dars. And Shaykh al-Islam, as I mentioned, he refuted these groups and more. He also refuted extensively in a book known as Minhaj al-Sunnah. He spoke extensively about the Shia and refuted them. He uh, wrote extensively about the Khawarij and refuted them. Even though some modern day takfiris like to quote from Shaykh al-Islam, they cut and paste, they take a bit uh, of his fatawa and they use it to support their madhab without taking the next page, without taking what Shaykh al-Islam uh, fully, his speech on what he said about these issues. And Shaykh al-Islam did not differ with the Salaf al-Sali radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in because in fact he was a great reformer. He revived the sunnah in his day because a lot of people had fallen, a lot of people who said la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammad rasulullah, they had went astray. They'd went away from the true meaning of that, especially in worship and in their belief. And Shaykh al-Islam called the people back to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu and revived the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in his writings. Those are just a little bit about Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. And as some of uh, the scholars mentioned, that even those people who differed with Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, the people who differed with him and the people who were some of his enemies, even recognized his scholarship and praised him. Radiallahu, uh, rahimahullah ta'ala. 
So we'll begin with the treaties. Qala Shaykh al-Islam, he began his treaties, he said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alhamdulillah alladhi arsala rasooluhu bil huda wa deen al-haqqi li yadhrahu ala deen kulli wa kafa billahi shaheedin wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la iqrarin bihi wa tawheedin wa ashadu an muhammadin abduhu wa rasooluhu sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam tasleeman mazeedin أما بعد فهذا الاعتقاد فرقة الناجية المنصورة إلى قيام الساعة. So Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah he began the book and the book that we're studying is called Al Aqida to Al Wasatiya. Al Aqida Al Wasatiya. And this book is a very important book about creed about the creed of Ahl Sunnah. Ahl Sunnah to the Jama'ah in general. It's a general book on creed which shows and illustrates and highlights the madhab of the Salaf regarding uh, very important issues of creed, of uh, important issues of aqidah and belief, like iman, what is iman, and uh, what is uh, ihsan, and uh, the other aspects of creed. In, in detail, in, in general, and then in detail. Also, he in this book he spoke extensively about Tawheed al Asma'i wa Sifat. He spoke extensively about the Tawheed of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's divine names and attributes. So we'll be, he, the Sheikh began his treatise, Rahimahullah Taala, by saying, he said, in the name of Allah, the most uh, merciful, the bestower of mercy. All praises are for Allah who sent His Messenger وسلم, with the guidance and the religion of truth to make it superior over all religions. And Allah is sufficient as a witness. And then he began with the Shahada. I testify that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah alone, the one without any partners. And I testify that Muhammad وسلم, is his slave and messenger. May Allah mention him, his family, his companions, and his followers among the angels, and safeguard them for perceived and immaterial harm. This is uh, in accordance with the translator, their uh, notes. As to what proceeds. Then the Shaykh said, This is the belief of the saved and victorious group, Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, until the establishment of the hour. So, Shaykh al Islam, he began by talking about the Bismillah. He said, Bismillah ar Rahman Rahim, or we'll mention some of the benefits from some of the ulama about this when, we, when it comes to explaining this, this book. Shaykh Salih bin Fozan, he mentioned that uh, Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he mentioned. That when he said Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, uh, then he mentioned a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that was narrated in Abu Dawood, where the Prophet ﷺ said, "Kullu amr, uh, kullu, uh, kullu amrin dhulba, dhulbal la yabda'u fihi bihamdillah fuhuwa aqta." Uh, he mentioned a hadith uh, in which. This hadith, uh, the ulama uh, differ over its soundness, but which means the meaning is sahih in that this was the madhab uh, of the Salaf al that they began their books with Bismillah. That when they wrote, because the Prophet ﷺ, this comes from the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, that when the Prophet ﷺ, he wrote uh, to like uh, the leader of the Roman Empire and the Greeks and, and other uh, leaders of that time who were powerful nations before, uh, before the advent of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ, in his time, he wrote giving them da'wah. And he would write on his letters the Bismillah. He would say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Okay? And he would invite and call them to Islam. And so from this fact, since the Prophet ﷺ began this, uh, uh, began this sunnah, alayhi salatu wasalam, then the uh, ulama of Islam, when they wrote their books, their books in aqidah, their books in fiqh, their books in hadith, their books in all the jurisprudence, whether it be ulum al-Quran, whether it be books of tafsir or what have you, they began with the Bismillah. 
They began with the Bismillah by saying Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen All praise belongs to Allah the Lord of the world So this is from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and so this Hadith which means that we mention that every affair that does not uh, every affair that's important that does not begin with Bismillah or, or Alhamdulillah then it is Aqta and Shaykh Salim bin Fuzan says, وَمَعْنَ أَقْتَى أَيَ مَعْدُومْ الْبَرَكَةَ وَيَجْمَعْ بَيْنَ رُوَايَتَيْنَ لِلْحَدِيثِ بِأَنَّ الْإِبْتِدَى بِبَسْمِ اللَّهِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ حَقِيقِ وَبِالْحَمْدِ لِلَّهِ نَسْبِ إِضَافِي So the Shaykh uh, mentioned, the important thing for us, the Shaykh mentioned in explaining Aqta here, that the Prophet ﷺ said that every affair that does not begin with uh, praising Allah, alhamdulillah, then it is aqta, meaning that it is without barakah. So every affair that does not mention alhamdulillah in the beginning, or bismillah, then it is uh, without barakah, without reward, or without blessings, without blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's important for us to at least in accordance with the meaning, and in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, to try our best to include the Bismillah, especially when it comes to Islamic activities, like if someone's doing a lecture, someone's doing a, a kalima, giving someone, give, giving advice, uh, whatever the situation, or you're writing a letter, or something like this, especially to a Muslim. But if you're writing to others and you fear that it may be uh, thrown away, or you're giving them things and it has Allah, uh, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, then this we want to be cautious of. So. Uh, we should try to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anytime we have a gathering. This is the, the main point here. Uh, then the Shaykh mentioned some of the, in, in explaining the kalam of Shaykh al Islam, where he said, Alladhi arsala rasuluhu, when he was talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sent his messengers. Alayhi salatu wa salam. He sent the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Arsala rasuluhu. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a blessing to mankind and that he sent the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with his message message alayhi salatu wasalam, and the Sharia meaning Islamic law and this came through Wahi it came through divine revelation from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and this divine revelation and this uh, Huda this guidance the Shaykh mentioned that the guidance is of two types. That the guidance is of two types. The guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said our, our guidance in general is of two types. Well Huda Noan. Guidance is of two types. An no al awul. no no al awul. He said the first type of guidance. He said it is the guidance with the meaning Dilala will bayan this is the guidance of showing and making things clear because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam his sunnah is one of the ways in which we explain the quran some some verses in the quran you would say are they the ulama they they call them mujmal some ayats they're mujmal meaning they're very general that in order to understand it fully, how to practice it, or to the ex explanation, we look to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa aqimu salat. Allah says, and establish the prayer. A salat. Salat, in the Arabic language, it means a dua. One of the meanings is a dua, as a, as a linguistic term. But salat has another meaning in the sharia. Salat in the Sharia, it means that which uh, it's a, a, a specific type of worship which begins with the Takbir al Ihram and ends with the Taslim in accordance with the Sunnah of the Prophet. So that's what Salat means as, uh, in, as a Sharia term. How do we know this? We know this from the Sunnah of the Prophet. So the Prophet ﷺ came with the guidance which was bayan, which made clear ayats of the Qur'an. 
he made clear so that way we know how to practice the Quran we understand Salat by the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, by praying like him this is how we know because the, the Quran doesn't give you all the details of Salat it doesn't talk it doesn't give us necessarily uh, we wouldn't if we just tried to figure out how to pray from the Quran alone we would pray, all of us would pray slightly different because it doesn't have all the details. It doesn't have takbir to ihram. It doesn't have uh, necessarily, um, it mention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about sujood in the Quran and arka'u uh, raki'in, you know, and making ruku' and stuff like this. But we wouldn't know how to, how that would look. But we know how to do those actions of prayer from the Prophet ﷺ. So this is one of the types of guidance. The, type, the first type of guidance as we mentioned, Dilala wa bayan, meaning that the Prophet ﷺ clarified the Qur'an. The Prophet clarified the Qur'an and gave us guidance on how to practice the Qur'an and how to practice Islam. Uh, and the Prophet ﷺ as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّكَ لِتَهْدِي إِلَى الصَّرَاطِ مستقيم. And verily you guide to the straight path. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions as Dalil that the, the Prophet wasallam's guidance should be followed and that he was, guiding, he was guiding us to clarity and that he was guiding us to the Sirat al-Mustaqeen, that ayat. That verily, uh, verily you guide to the straight path. Sirat al-Mustaqeen. The Prophet ﷺ guided us to the straight path. Then that brings up to us the second type of guidance. So the first type is bayan, is, is that the Prophet ﷺ explained, made clear Islam for us, made clear the Quran for us, uh, made clear the straight path for us. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّكَ لَتَهْدِي إِلَى صَرَاتِ مُسْتَقِيمِ The Prophet ﷺ made clear for us the straight path. The second type of guidance is al hadi uh, hadi bi ma'na a tawfiq wal ilham so this type of guidance as Sheikh Solomon Fozan mentioned the second type of guidance is that the pro, uh, is the guidance of tawfiq the guidance of that the the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was not responsible for this type of guidance tawfiq tawfiq comes from Allah a tawfiq, the guidance of tawfiq, it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning that this is the guidance, that means that someone will accept the, the, the guidance of Islam. For example, the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu the, the hidayah of the Prophet sallallahu was to show people the sirat al-mustaqim. So he called the Quraysh, he called his people, he called the different tribes, the Arab tribes, and so forth during his time to Islam. He guided them away from kufr and shirk and um, all of those bad qualities to Islam. That was the guidance of Dilala wa wal bayan. So that he clarified the straight path for them. He gave them dawah. Okay, that's the first type of guidance. The second type of guidance we're talking about, a tawfiq. A tawfiq, that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because only Allah could make their hearts accept Islam. And the evidence for that is the Prophet ﷺ called his uncle, uh, Abdul Muttalib, to Islam. And he didn't accept it. Even on his deathbed, he said, I can't leave uh, the, the, the religion of my fathers. You know, I can't leave the religion of my fathers. The Prophet ﷺ could not guide him to accept uh, Islam. Okay? The Prophet ﷺ guided him by giving him da'wah. But the result is from Allah. The hearts are guided by Ar-Rahman, Al-Hadi, al uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Naam. So this is the guidance from uh, this is the guidance from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that Allah Tabarak wa Taala is responsible for uh, guiding guiding us to uh, gui guiding people to the Sirat al-Mustaqim and, and them accepting 
uh, the, the Surat al Mustaqim, accepting Islam. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala is the one who guides the heart. But all you can do is make tabliq, that you can call people with a message. And that shows that that's an example for us that when you invite someone to Islam, you tell people about Islam, you tell people about good. You do your job by showing them good way, showing them good manners, calling them, inviting them to Islam. But only Allah can guide their hearts. And it's the same thing any Tao. If you want to call somebody, they're doing bad stuff. And you want to invite them, you say, hey, don't do that bad stuff. Only Allah can guide their heart for them to leave that evil that they're upon. That is the tawfiq. But you are only responsible for the bayan. Dilalat for, for, for showing them the correct path. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides the people. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the, said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa qawluhu ta'ala, innaka la tahdi min ahbabta walakin allaha yahdi man yasha. Verily, you do not guide who you love or who you please. But verily, Allah, He guides whomsoever He pleases. This is talking, those two ayats, one says that the Prophet is guiding, uh, is giving guidance. And the other one says you cannot give guidance. How do we understand those ayats? We understand those ayats because the first one is referring to bayan, that the Prophet can give the guidance of da'wah, of calling people and showing them the correct way and inviting them with good manners and conduct, alayhi salatu wasalam, that that was his, his message, alayhi salatu wasalam. The other guidance, the other ayat was referring to uh, um, a tawfiq, uh, uh, huda a tawfiq, tawfiqiyah. You know, this was the guidance in which only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses this, this uh, ability to change our hearts and bless us to accept Islam and accept the truth, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the beginning of the treaty, so Shaykh al-Islam, he mentioned, he said, Alhamdulillah, ladhi arsala rasuluhu bil huda wa deen al-haq, as we mentioned, li yudharahu ala deen kullihi wa kafa billahi shaheedin. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he, he praised Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who got, uh, who is worthy of all worship and is the only praise uh, who is worthy of full praise and that he sent his messenger alayhi salatu wasalam with guidance wa deen al haq wa deen al haq li yudhru ala deen kulli and the guy and the religion of the truth which precedes all religions showing us that islam precedes all other deens and islam it negates or it abrogates the other shari'i, the other sharia, sharias like uh, the deen of the Yahud and the deen of the, the Nasara who came before the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and those those NBA that came before their message, the message of Tawheed is the same, but their different laws are replaced in Islam. They had different Sharia laws. They had different laws. In Islam, now we're responsible to practice Islam in accordance with the way the Prophet ﷺ practiced Islam. And Imam Babahari rahimahullah ta'ala said, a beautiful statement, uh, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, he was a great Hanbali scholar of the 4th century, I believe. And he said that Islam who was sunnah, was sunnah to heal Islam. He said Islam is the sunnah, and the sunnah is Islam. So that lets us know that you can't have one without the other, meaning that they're the same. Islam is the sunnah, because when we talk about Islam, when we talk about what the four Imams, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam uh, Malik, Imam Shafi, Imam Ahmed, what they uh, were practicing and calling the people to in their fiqh and so forth were calling and, and what they were agreed upon that evidence evidence in Islam is based on the asl is those two but the asl is four things evidence is from the Quran first and foremost and then the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and then the ijma the ijma meaning the consensus 
and then Qiyas, which is uh, like comparative jurisprudic reasoning. Those are the four aspects of evidence in Islam. They come from those four things. Although the last two, there's some difference of opinion about them, but especially the Quran and the Sunnah, everyone is in agreement who is a Muslim. That we take from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, and that they form the basis of our religion. Then, moving on so we don't take up too much time, so after that introduction, and after the praise upon the Prophet wasallam and his companions عنهم, and, his, and Ahl Bayt and the family of the Prophet وسلم, the family includes, includes anyone who's practicing the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم. that is a very general meaning of those people who are considered uh, uh, alihi, you know, those people who follow the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and then more specifically Ahl Bayt those people who are related to the Prophet in blood kinship. Then the Shaykh said, Amma ba'd, as for what proceeds. After that, his, his brief introduction, he said, as for what proceeds. And then we'll just read the first sentence and then we'll, we'll end and we'll explain it. So then he said, and as for what proceeds. He said, فَهَذَا الْإِتِّقَادِ الْفِرْقَةَ النَّاجِيَ الْمَنْصُورَ إِلَى قِيَامِ He said, and this, meaning this whole book, he wrote it in between Salat al-Asr and Salat al-Maghrib. On so, people from a faraway land, called, uh, I believe it was called uh, al wasita that they asked him a question. They said, what is the, the aqidah of Ahl-Sunnah? We want to know, what does Ahl-Sunnah believe? Uh, you know, what is the creed of Ahl-Sunnah? So they, they asked this question. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah wrote this book in between Asr and Maghrib. And we take sometimes months, if not years, just to study it. It is so uh, profound and so important and so full of the creed of Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah. So he said, فَهَذَا اِعْتِقَادْ فِرْقَةَ النَّاجِيَةَ الْمَنْصُورَ إِلَى قِيَامِ سَعَى He said, and this is the belief of the saved group of فِرْقَةَ النَّاجِيَةَ الْمَنْصُورَ The saved sect until the day of judgment, until the hour is established. This is the creed of them. Shaykh, uh, Shaykh Salih bin Fawzan, Hafidullah Ta'ala, he said, a firqa, ayat ta'ifa wal jama'ah. So firqa, it means a group or a jama'ah. A najia, ay allati salamat min halak wa shurur fi dunya wal akhirah. So this is beautiful. He said, uh, "Anajia, firqa to Najia, mean the saved, uh, the uh, the uh, Najia, the successful group." Why did Sheikh Al Islam say the successful group? Sheikh Salim bin Fozan says, in meaning Najia, they were saved. What What do you think you could be saved from? You're saved from what? You're saved from being destroyed, and saved from being saved from evil in this life and in the hereafter. That's why, they're, uh, that's why they're considered the successful group. They're successful from uh, being destroyed. How are you destroyed? When you are on bid'ah, kullu bid'ah tan dalala, as the Prophet wasallam, all bid'ah, all religious innovation leads astray. This is Muhammad wasallam who said this. So since all bid'ah leads astray, a firqa tanajia, they're the firqa tanajia because they tamasik bi kitab wa sunnah. They hold on to the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu and the understanding of the salaf al-salih, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, meaning the sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. So this is how they're saved. They're saved what? What are they saved from? They're saved from being destroyed. They're saved from the hellfire. Then the shaykh said, he said that, you know, that this wasp, this description comes from a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا تزل طائفة من أمتي على الحق من صورة لا يضرهم من خذلهم حتى يأتي أمر الله رواه بخاري ومسلم. In this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, which explains for us why Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, a firqa tanajia. Why did he say that they are successful? Because 
this comes from a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ where he said وسلم, There won't cease to be a group from my nation that is on the truth al uh, haq al mansura that they will, they are helped la yadurruhum no one will harm them man khadalahum those who differ with them or try to deceive them or uh uh inam or try to harm them man khadalahum hatta yatihum amr allah until uh the command of allah the fear of allah uh uh, is fulfilled. And this is Ruahu Bukhari and Muslim. So this hadith shows us that there will always be a group of Ahl Sunnah will always be apparent. They will always be, even when Ahl Sunnah is little, in time, all throughout in the history of Islam, sometimes Ahl Sunnah was weak, meaning they were few in numbers. And Ahl Bid'ah had it spread in the time when the Mu'tazila, the Ashairah, still the Ashairah are with us, the, the Jahamiya, the uh, all these groups and sects, the Khawarij, the Shia, the, the, uh, uh, the Murjia, all of these groups and sects with various beliefs about uh, creed and deviant, uh, deviation, they all, uh, they, there were times when they were very strong and Ahl Sunnah was weak. But Ahl Sunnah will always be around and no one can harm them. They cannot be harmed. Doesn't mean they can't be feel, uh, be uh, tortured, or they can't, no, that's not what the meaning here is, it means they will, they will always be present up until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and until the, the day of judgment, or until the hour is being established as the signs of the last day there's different interpretations that the ulama mention regarding this so Ahl Sunnah will always be apparent even if sometimes they're in a weak state and people are trying to harm them they will still be firm on the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu even if the people call them bad names for example look at now that those people uh, now the name Salafi has become a very negative name to many people many people who don't consider themselves Salafi uh, and, and many people who are not Salafi, they they speak ill of the term Salafiyun and Salafiyah. But Salafiyah just means adhering to Kitabillah. Wa sunnatu Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the aqidah and minhaj of the firqat al najiyah But that does not mean anyone who calls himself Salafi is in fact Salafi. That comes with how they're practicing. That comes to how they understand the religion, how their minhaj, how their methodology for understanding and practicing and understanding the religion. Al Mansura ila qiyamasa. So Sheikh Salman Fuzan said ila qiyamasa. He said, "I muji sa'a motihim alati yukun biha intaha dunya fihi Allah tukum." Uh, Sheikh Salim Fansan said, uh, Ta'ala, he said that when it when Sheikh Islam said until the hour is established, this means that when until the time when they will die, where the uh, wind which will come and take the souls of people, you know, uh, the people will die uh, with this wind, which is one of the signs of the hour, and will take the soul of every believer. And then at that point, that there will only be the worst of creation will exist. But the sa, the last hour of this dunya, the the last time of the that this worldly life will exist, that that is the time when the worst of people will live. The worst of people will live after that. So at that time, according to the hadith from the various hadith, we understand that at the last times, there will be only the worst people. So Ahl Sunnah will not be apparent at that time, but they will be apparent until the believers are no longer uh, on the earth and it will only be the worst of, of creation. And so this is what Sheikh Salih bin Fazan he mentioned about that time and he uh, gave us a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ which illustrates this. And so we will we will end there.
and pick up uh, in our next dars in Aqidah to Wasatiyah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.